Can you share with me what the turnaround story was? At what point did you decide that you realized this? I think what really shook me in rest of peace to Ebony was her death. I saw myself in her. I, even though I knew God, mm. I wasn't in God. But then when Ebony died, I just shook me. I said, God, I'm not joking with you anymore. No when, mm. when, when you're empty, you do things that are an empty person would do. But then when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you start to do things that you have no control of. Mm. Like with love. We as Christians in this world, we're so ready to attack and condemn and point fingers at these children, but all they really want is love. If you talk to us calmly and show us that, that you care in a loving way, we will one day come to uh, um, if yeah. Yes. Is, is this you G-H-S-O or this is TV. the demands of the industry? When I talk about is this you? That, like That was me. When, again, as I speak, I am speaking as a new person. Even though it's still me, but I've allowed the Holy okay, Spirit to that, work through. Okay, was that, sorry, was that you? Was it, was, it was, was that me when I was in the world, when I didn't allow God to work through me, when I didn't allow the Holy Spirit to walk through me. At now, I might not want to do those things because I'm becoming a new person and it's not of my control. When the Holy Spirit works through you, you have no control of it. The decisions mm. are not your decisions anymore. You're gonna, yeah. So at, at that time, it was me because I was in the world. Did you get any feedback like, this girl is looking for attention? Yeah, I got that feedback Were all the time, but I attention? wasn't. Do you think that people like like that who do stuff like that have a void in their life? Oh, that people who that, do stuff like yes, like um, putting out naked pictures. Some people, the, some people to tame me to make sure. But there are times when I was like twelve, I would leave. I had friends who would influence me to do things that I thought was cool. If, but at home, I'm good. But I'm outside, I'm not. So then, do you stop blaming? your upbringing because our mothers try to make mold us and keep us but then there are influences outside that wanted us you, to be you know, other what, things I, I i'm just excited <laughs> i'm just so excited about the things that you're sharing but i want to also get into the mind of a young girl who does the things you used to do i was just influence to- of I, I i wasn't inside god like i wasn't in god i was the influence of my own when, when, when you're empty, you do things that are an empty person would do. But then when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you start to do things that you have no control of. Like, I want people to understand. You don't condemn these kids. You don't talk. You, you, have, to, you have to express love to these kids. People talk to me. I have, I have prophets and pastors and worshipers who talk love to me. And it's just like a little bit. They're planting things in me each time. And they're planting love. And it just grew and grew. And then I'm, I'm becoming what they expected me to become. What they knew I, that was in me already. Just with love. We as Christians in this world, we're so ready to attack and condemn and point fingers at these children. But all they really want is love. If you talk to us calmly and show us that, that you care in a loving way, we will one day come to you. But if you're always attacking and saying things in a harsh way, we'll always be running and trying to prove a point that we know we are, we're going to do what you said we shouldn't do. Just because you're being so harsh to us. But if you come to us with love... We only have one way but to just conform to what you're saying. When God comes to us, he comes to us in a peaceful manner. He doesn't, he's standing at the door. Not You You have a choice to open that door. God is not saying, take me. He's saying, I'm here. When you're ready, come to me. And that's what us, the Christians or the, the, the older people, they're, 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 they don't come to us with grace. They, they come to us in a harsh way and then we run away. Psychologically, we do that. Unknowingly, we do that. So I'm, I'm pleading with the men of God and the people who look down on us or, or, or people that we're supposed to look up to, come to us with love. We have no other option but to conform eventually. You guys are speaking, but you might think we're not listening. The words are there. We have to also avail ourselves. I, I, it's, it's many times, and we're always fighting. I'm always fighting with my flesh. My spirit and my flesh is always fighting, but I always pray to God. I say, God, you know my heart and you know that I love you. Help me that I can help myself. And this all started from also home. My mom prays and I watch my mom pray. I come from a Christian home, but then I'm also in the world. It's, it's just a fight. Every day is a fight. But my mom never pushed me away. She understood for me and she prayed for me. G-H-M-P-O and her prayers are TV. working. So can you share with me what the turnaround story was? At what point did you decide that you realized that? Because I've, I've watched a lot of your interviews and no, this is me. This is how this I express me. me. You know, but your, your talk is different now. The talk, you know, it was always there, mm-hmm. but 
I think what really shook me and rest the peace to Ebony was her death. I saw myself in her and she was free, bubbly spirit. But then when two weeks prior, me, I hadn't been to church for about two or three years and not because I don't love going to church, but I don't just go to church just to go to church. My spirit has to be in it. Like I, I, I like I, I started going to Maker's Chapel about two weeks before she died. And then at that time I was like, okay, God, I want to be celibate. I don't want to have sex until I get married. You know, it was in my mind. I was praying. But then when Ebony died, it shook me. I said, God, I'm not joking with you no more. I'm taking you serious. Because that could have been me. So Ebony's, I, Ebony's, Ebony's death was a just, major... It, it was a major impact in my life. Like, I've been in fast cars before. I didn't die. Why? I'm not better than Ebony. I'm no better than her. I was just like her. I lived in this world, fun, free, bubbly. That's how Ebony was. She went to church, and people don't know. People are, were so quick to point fingers at her and talk bad about her, but they didn't know the purity of her heart. If you guys came to her with love, maybe she could have been, she could have been better. But she wasn't a bad person. And people look at people like us like we're bad, and we're really not bad. We just, we're just in the world, and we're just trying to find our way, and we just need guidance. People, you guys need to bring love to us. Love saves all and love covers all sins. And many people sin behind closed doors. These same people who point fingers at Ebony, they're masturbating behind closed doors. They're watching porn. They're sleeping with people's wives and husbands. They're lying. They're, they're stealing. They're backbiting. They're doing all of these negative things. But because Ebony was in the public's eye and she dressed differently, you guys condemned her and talked negative about her. But you did not know her heart. And it hurts me. Because I was the same person. You guys did the same thing to me. Not and every time, every time I make a post, I talk about love. I talk about God. Because God lives in me and God lives in all of us. We just need to love each other. Love saves all and it covers all and it brings us all together.